Hello friends. In today's session, we will be talking about uh, the direct method for calculating arithmetic mean. So let's first take a recap of arithmetic mean. We know that for any set of data, the arithmetic mean is given by the sum of all the observations divided by the number of observations. So, for example, we have n observations x1, x2, x3 till xn, then the mean of these observations would be the sum of these observations, which is x1 plus x2 plus x3 till xn, divide by the number of observations, which is n. So, this is what, the, what represents the arithmetic mean of the given set of observations. Now, for each observation, xi, if it appears fi times, then we use a different formula to calculate the mean. So, let's first of all say, take an example. Say, for example, we have this set of observations that we're just writing down here. this kind of an observation set we have. Now, if we are to calculate its mean, we will take the sum of all of these, which would be 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 2 plus 6 and then plus 2 and divide it by the total number of observations, which is 8 in this case. So, this is how we will calculate the arithmetic mean using this standard formula. But now, instead of doing this, supposing we just see that 1 appears 2 times, 2 appears 3 times, and rest of the observation appear 1 time each. So, if we know the frequency, how frequently is it appearing? So, if you are saying x1 is equal to 1, then f1, the frequency of 1 appearing is 2 in this set of data. Similarly, if x2 is 2, then its frequency is 3. And for all other values of x, which is 3, 5 and 6, the corresponding frequency is 1. So, if uh, instead of adding 1 2 times and adding 2 3 times, if we can just multiply this observation with its frequency, which we, which is x1 f1 and then add it to the product of x2 f2. This is x2 and this is f2 and similarly we keep on doing that the result is going to be the same the normal addition of all the observations divided by the number of observations now number of observations was 8 now instead of doing that if we say f1 is 2 f2 is 3 and then f3 f4 f5 are 1 each then the denominator becomes 8 again so if we now, this is a small set of data. So, even if we use the standard formula of mean, where we're just adding the observations and dividing them with the number of observations, that would be possible. But supposing if we have a huge data of maybe 100 observations or 200 observations, then, and some of the observations obviously are repeated. Now, then using this formula where we are, we are multiplying the observation with its frequency, and then adding them together, dividing with the total number of observations, which is the sum of all the frequencies. This is going to be a much easier approach to do it. So, we can say instead of writing x1 plus x1 f1 plus x2 f2, we can write it as mean is equal to summation of xi fi i obviously changing from 1 to n, whatever be the value, 
divide by summation of f i. So this is this summation is the notation that we are doing the product and then adding it to the next product. Now what if we have a grouped data instead of this this kind of an observation set? If you have a grouped data where see when we are talking about huge set of observations 100, 200, 500 observations we cannot have data in this form where we are writing every observation individually. Then we take the approach of grouping the data into different classes. So we make, <coughs> we make the classes of the type 0 to 2. How many observations are there? 2 to 4. How many observations are there? 4 to 6, how many observations are there and so on. So this is how we make the grouping and the group, the class size will depend upon the distribution of the data across the across the set. So we can use the same formula for the grouped data where xi is the class mark and fi is the frequency of that class. Now we are just going to see how we are going to do that. How we will use this formula to calculate the arithmetic mean in case of a grouped data. So now let's take an example of this grouped data where we have marks and the number of students. So we are saying 20 students have marks in the range of 40 to 50. 16 students have the marks, their marks in the range of 50 to 60. 40 students have their marks in the range of 60 to 70 and so on. Now, we know that we, we've just talked about this, that the arithmetic mean is given by summation of xi fi divided by summation of fi. So now let's see what is xi in this case? Now this, the observation is in the, is classified in terms of classes. So now we can't take xi as any direct value. We know fi, this column, number of student column is representing the fi, but xi is what we need to find out. So now let's make a new table. So here we have marks. And this is number of students. Now this is xi, which is nothing but the class mark. And this is, this number of students is nothing but fi. So this column we take the product of xi fi. So now if you are saying, let's take a different color. And if you are saying marks is 40 to 50, number of students 20. So the class mark is the middle of the class so which becomes 45 and this becomes 900. Now here we have let's first note down the complete, complete column. So number of students corresponding to each class 
we'll write down here now let's write, write down the class mark for each of the class so it is the middle of each class So this is what we get. Now we need to multiply this fi with xi. So it becomes 55 into 16. So which becomes 880. Here it becomes 2. 60 this becomes 750 this becomes 680 this becomes 570 and now we can add this together and we can add the, the fi together this is 100 students and we can add these together and get the sum summation of xi fi and divide it by 100 to get the arithmetic mean. So this comes out to be 63.80. So the mean is equal to 63.80 by 100. So for this group of students, these 100 students, the mean marks is 63.8. So this is the mean marks of the, this set of data. Friends, I hope you enjoyed the session. If you find it useful, please like it and share it with your friends. You can visit us at our Cool Smart Learning website and post your queries there. And please subscribe to the Cool Smart Learning channel for getting updates on the new sessions. Thank you.